Thank you very much. You're a good audience. A really beautiful audience. Now, Africa has to stop talking. Africa has to do practical solutions. We took away the colonialists. That's a gone case. We should not go back to that. And therefore, my area is on practical solutions to solving African problems. And I've got a number of technologies that I'm going to show you, which are working beautifully well. And my areas that I've been concerned with are definitely slum areas and refugee camps all over the Horn and Eastern part of Africa. And therefore, I've taken planes, small planes, two, three people in the plane to make sure that our people lead a good life. If you look at a slum, there are some of the things that you'll always be hearing. Housing, water supply, what have you. Now look at the projections. The year 2020, the year 2030, billions of people will be living in slums. Look at that map. But let me caution that map that Africa alone is not the only continent having refugees and, and uh, slum people. In Kenya, for example, look at those uh, slum areas. Kibera has been talked about here since I came this, this here. And that is because it is the biggest slum in Africa. Now look at it from the air. Now, that brings the point, where has the chemical engineer worked? If you look at those refugee camps, in the Horn of Africa, in this part of Africa, have laid my foot in those areas, trying to control certain vectors that I'm going to tell you. Look at that picture. This is a refugee camp in Ethiopia, Sudan border. That's the area where I went to make sure that people live good lives. Now, what were these interventions? That's the question. Let me tell you personally, I'm in love with nature. I'm a chemical engineer, but love with nature. You know, the good thing with nature, nature has got a lot of things that if you utilize them, you're going to get a lot of benefits from it. From the soil, from the waters, from the plants, from the human beings, the genes we're talking about. Now, the innovations that I have dealt with are three. The Bacillus thuringiensis. This is a bacterium that you can find in the soil anywhere in this part of the world. God created it there. The human being, the human mind, has gone there to find out what that uh, bacterium can do. That bacterium can crawl crop pests, can crawl vectors, can crawl everything, everything else. My interest is having an African local isolate. Look at hemicinin that Jacqueline talked about yesterday. In Arusha here, there's a lot of uh, artisanal plants. Now, malaria is killing thousands of our people. Now, nobody has taken the initiative to exploit that plant. The Sungoprot, this is a patented product from a plant, which is what we call an immune, AIDS immune booster, working very well. Now, the diseases, this one you have heard, but the most important thing about diseases is that these are now being neglected. People are talking of malaria, HIV AIDS, these are being neglected. But these are the ones that are killing our people most. Look at that beautiful fly. It's beautiful. But is it really beautiful? Because all those diseases that I've talked about, this is the mechanical carrier. And that's what I'm against. That's what I'm fighting. Now, my interest is stopping vectors from the level stage where they hide. The BT I'm talking about, the bacillus thuringiensis I've talked about, that I produce, looks at the, looks at the level, level of the field fly of the mosquito where they live. And you know what's interesting? Once you put them there, their food are the feces, the bacteria. They grow, produce the toxin, which is environmentally friendly. And you never get a fly out of it. If you get a fly out of it, maybe it has no leg, it has no food, whatever, just walk around. 
The most important thing about these nature products is that they are bio-friendly. Put them on your fish ponds. No tadpoles will die. Now, another enemy of mine is this malaria. The Anopheles mosquito. I'm not looking at the adult. I'm looking at the level stage. Now, once I've produced these technologies or these products, I look at places where I use them to control. This is a habitat of mosquito, and you can look at it and see how it's invaded, infested, infested. Look at those beautiful children in uh, Sudan, Ethiopia border. And we are talking about cheetahs. These are the cheetahs. But if these cheetahs die, what will come out of it? We have to make sure that we get rid of these mosquitoes so these beautiful young children can grow and the succession take over Moses' role. Because my time will come over. Now, to produce these things, you need sounds. And let me caution here that, and please take it home, there's nothing called African sounds. There's no American science. Science is science. And that's critical. So we do culture them, we produce the products. Now, this is the engineer now, using a pilot scale to produce the material to control those vectors. Now, this is a scientist in a three-seater, four-seater plane arriving in Ethiopia from Kenya, called by UNHCR to go and control the mosquitoes and the field flies, which are killing a lot of refugees in that area. You can see at the background the products there. Now, very simple technology. The pit toilets we're talking about in slums, that is where the maggots are. If you go to Kibera now and start walking around, the maggots will be walking around your foot. When we went there with my European friend, in fact, she was a lady, and she almost fell down in that area. Now, we got scared of the maggots around. It's a simple technology. You just put in the toilet. The feces are the food for the bacteria. They grow there. They produce their toxin, and no fly will come out. I'm very interested in local materials. Not important. And I produce these products from local materials, starting from cow dung. Molasses, chicken offals, the intestines, the crop syrups, those are what I'm using, not human food. And therefore, if I'm using cow dung, you can see that you can control flies in manyatas, Masai manyatas, just spray where the cows are, and no animals will be kicking around. Now, these are my people now. We have declared war on the mosquitoes and the faith flies. They're doing the control. Now, this is the scientist in uh, China, really enjoying the Chinese. Here, they are referring to me as uh, president of Kenya, but I'm not a president. They're walking around you. But the idea I'm sending home here is that people must interact. We are here with international people interacting on how to produce the best material, the highest quality that can control the vectors. Now, this is in Nairobi area. The city council of Nairobi has declared a mosquito an enemy and therefore ordered our products to do that. And this is a medical doctor doing the job. The next in, uh, innovation is the atemesin. Look at the structure, look at the mosquito. What have I done as a chemical engineer? Had a Tanzanian friend, he's a medical doctor, had a German friend, a mechanical engineer. They came to my institute, we sat together. The problem was developing a pilot production simulation process to produce active ingredient from this plant to control the mosquito. Within two months, we had come out with a good pilot production simulation process. And I can ask report now, there's a plant being put in Nairobi now at 10 million US dollars, which is going to produce this particular drug for the control of mosquito. What a good omen for the African people. This is a termination plant, which Jacqueline showed very well. 
It's very common here in Arusha. This has been here for years. But nobody has ever thought of nature as the answer to our problems. Now, the last innovation is the nutritive innovation called Sungopront. This is a plant that is found in Kenya. And we have to sit down and look at it. Let me tell you, it's a great immune booster. A beautiful plant. Look at it. But whoever, who knew that that could be help the AIDS virus people? The scientists did it. Moses had to come in. Love friends. This product now is allowed by the Kenya government to be used in hostels. It's really not a drug. It's what we call an immune booster. It's a special and it's patented worldwide. We are now looking at a way of really uh, producing in mass. And you can see the, the craviness. The people want to have it. International, it's an international meeting. The policeman looking for it. Everyone looking for it. Because once you take it as, as a food supplement, you get going. Now, the challenge of innovators is like my last, really. Prototype development is really a problem. In other words, once you have the lab results, to scale it up to the bigger plants a problem. And therefore, we are calling upon our friends from overseas. And I believe in friends, because without friends, you can't do much. And the world of isolation is gone. Networking is the order of the day. The question is with innovations. A lot of fighting, as my other sister was saying. Who, what belongs to who? Who invented it? Who should have the biggest share? All those problems come in. But most important is what I've noticed in Kenya and Africa, the low entrepreneurial culture. The idea of taking small things, making them big. It's an area that we need really to work on. Another important one is own technologies. We don't believe in ourselves. And Africa must take that. Our technology must be the best. Must national industries don't recognize the innovations. And that means that if they don't come and we work together, because piloting is good, but to produce for commercial scale is another step. And let me say that the misconceptions that innovators are very intelligent people, people like uh, with PhDs, does not hold water. An inventor, once given the good environment, innovator can come from anywhere. Of course, as a scientist, this is one of the things, lack of policy in Africa, which has really messed up with our innovators. Because the old idea is that if a university, you publish or perish. You don't publish, you don't become a professor. But I'm saying, publish fine. What about patent or perish? Patent, if you can. But most important is Africa cannot wait. You produce or you perish. Therefore, you must balance the three Ps. In the culture of buy foreign, local is bad. We must get away with it. Microfinance, I've been talking with a number of friends here, seems to be too expensive for our people. It's an area that donors can come in. Risk, it, risk it, take us. Let me tell you, frankly speaking, that in Africa, there are very few risk takers. And we need to improve on that. Now, the way forward. Sorry. R&D activities must go on in Africa. We cannot stop it. But we must mix it with prototype development, reverse engineering, tear down. Take this computer, tear it down. Look at it. Look what can be made in Kenya. What can be made in Tanzania. Make it. Because current and 7% of things are important. Patent mining. We must go out and look at the patents outside. Those of which have expired, we must be able to use them. But most important also, incubation systems. We must introduce incubation systems in Africa. Bring the medium, small industries, give them the space, give them the BDS, business development services, let them stay there for six months, let them mature up, 
let them get the market, move out, and become Bill Gates of Africa. That is critical. More importantly is, we must do what is called market-driven technology, ideology. Let's not do research for the sake of it. My concluding remarks, ladies and gentlemen, and this is important. Age has caught up with African scientists and engineers of the colonial era. Young scientists and engineers must now stand up and be counted. Number two, Africa must industrialize in whole, not just part of it. Moses, uh, you get to sit in the hot seat here for just two minutes. <laughs> we, we have a, a, a couple of questions. Please. Um, first of all, on the Artemis Missinin, is your invention um, a, a drug for treatment of malaria or is it about malaria prevention? Treatment of the malaria. It's a drug. Yeah. But the idea was still to get the active ingredient out of it and then form uh, tablets out of it. So the plant which we put, put up in Kenya now is really to produce the... The, the medicine itself. Yeah. Right, and so we were hearing today about, uh, it, does that connect with the ABE project that's already, that we heard about yesterday that's already operating in Kenya? Yeah, you know, the problem with the, with, the, with the research in Africa that people do their own things. Right. People do and do their own things. But currently we have the biological, uh, uh, what we call the biological Africa, which are still working on this, together from Tanzania, Kenya, and also from Germany. Okay, so perhaps yeah. we can arrange a connection after yes, to, please. To, to bridge that gap. That would yes. be good. Yeah. And then, I, I, I mean, I was curious on the, the HIV immune booster. Um, so this is, this is, again, designed as a, this is a drug for people already who have HIV as an, as an alternative to the expensive Western or generic drugs? Uh, correct. It's very cheap. And as I said, it's an immune booster. Once you take it as a food supplement, your immune system goes up. So it's really not curing the AIDS, but really immune boosting the white cells. It's Bobby. not intended as a pre preventative no, no. thing. Yeah. I mean, we, we have um, with us actually here uh, Seth Berkeley, who heads the International AIDS Vaccine Initiative. Do you, do you know about this innovation, Seth? You, I don't know if you're in the hall. Are you in the hall? Seth, yeah. Do, can we get a mic to Seth? I'd just be interested in just a quick, quick comment on this. Sorry, he's right, he's right at the back. Uh, what, what are the, so what are the results of it? The, the results are very good, and uh, the lives of people are really getting on. We are patenting the product, and... Uh, and how, how does it compare to, like, to the, a drug regime? Yeah, it's very good. It's, it's fairly comparable. Fairly co co comparable. And, and, and again, very cheap. And people are taking it now in hospitals in Kenya and uh, some in West Africa. It's the so, really so, good. so you're saying the performance comparable to the drugs and the price... Yeah, the price is fairly low. Like a third as much, a quarter as much? Yeah, one-fifth of the price. One-fifth, wow. Yeah, one -fifth, yeah. Seth? Um, I wasn't aware of this particular drug, and my question would be what type of clinical studies have been done, because one of the fabulous things about Africa is all the, the, the uh, native cures that exist um, in, in the indigenous system, and the challenge is getting those into a system tested in a placebo-controlled trial to show that they really work. And so if this innovation you know, works, it's something that's very important, and the challenge is what are the studies that have demonstrated its value? Yeah, that's a very good question. But let me put it this way, that uh, when we talk about clinical trials, which is really now going on, let's all think of the African herbal medicine. In fact, what's happening now in Africa, and Kenya, for example, is not what we are trying to do is now what we call, have what we call a policy on herbal medicine. If you look at the Eastern countries, the herbal medicine and the, and the Western medicine are running parallel. But what we are doing now with the drug or with this particular thing is that we are, we are quite close with the California University on the clinical trials. And so far what we are getting, the clinical trials are really very, very good. And in fact, we are going to publish that very soon. And, and finally, Moses, about, about your, your own future, how, how, how do you picture your own future? What's, what's your dream for you? Yeah, my dream is very simple. My dream, I want to have Africa really devoid of diseases, healthy people, Africa, we can industrialize. And my dream is very simple. In 50 years' time, 
I want Africa to catch up with the development world. We cannot wait. That gap is too long. Moses, thank you so much. Thank you.